need to do and what are the benefits of actually using the power virtual agent when we are connecting to the power central itself. So, first of all, to introduce ourselves, my name is Nikola Pancic. I am coming from uh, Belgrade, Serbia. Currently, I am one of the leaders in the community group that's called BSource UG Serbia. Currently, I'm working in company Arda Group, positioned there as a Dynamics 365 analyst. And also, I have recently begun blogging, so there is also a link to my blog. You'll be able to check it out. It's called punch.tech, so if you want to check it out, please do it here. Yeah. And I'm here with my colleague. Hello, everybody. I am uh, Marko Totovic. Uh, also, I am uh, Microsoft MVP, and I have become recently this 1st of April. So beside that, I am BSource uh, user group uh, leader in Serbia, and also I'm working in company Arda Group, and you can follow me on my blog on totovic.com. So for today, we have prepared general topic to you, how to connect Power Virtual Agent and Business Central. Until the moment when we are going to start to connect those two systems, we have to introduce you a little bit to some different tools which we are going to use today, and I will try to explain you some of them, Nicola will explain some, the rest of them, and we will present to you how really to connect it and how it can work. So, first of all, I would like to introduce you to Power Virtual Agents. If you have never had possibility to use them or to try them, I will just give you some general info and then I will show you how they generally work. Then, one really great tool, Adaptive Card, which we have used and we will show you again how to use it. And it is pretty great in chatbots because it can help you to, to put some number of questions inside of one, uh, one card and so that general conversation with the chatbot and the customer to be more natural. And then Power Automate, which is uh, our main tool of connecting Business Central with the rest of the tools which we are going to use today. So this is first introduction to the general stuff, and then we are going to focus why we are connecting those systems and how really Business Center and Power Virtual Agents work together and what data can you take and what you can present to your customers. So for the beginning, Power Virtual Agents are most easily say regular chatbots. Uh, they're easy mm, to create and it's really easy to organize them to follow your conversation, your idea of conversation with the customer. They're there for elevating conversation and to uh, give you the bigger value of chatbots because uh, in Power Virtual Agent, this is like general power platform. Everything is drag and drop. You are having the idea of what you want to, to use and how you want to connect to your customers, and there is always something, some of uh, AI and ChatGPT at the back, and I will try to explain a little bit more. So, okay. <laughs> so, when I say it's easy to create conversational bots, it is really easy. So, uh, the idea of them, uh, of Power Virtual Agent, is to easily uh, integrate them to many different pages or websites or wherever you would like, and to have really fast response to customer and employee needs. This means that uh, Power Virtual Agent can be oriented to the both sides. You can create them to connect to your uh, local employees to, let's say, maybe example for them to take uh, annual leave while using Power Virtual Agents or to connect to the customers like we are going to do today to create sales orders directly with conversation to chatbot. Also, uh, there is a way how you can create them pretty easier uh, with using of GPT. So this is new stuff in uh, Copilot, and there is some part of ChatGPT which you can use and uh, connect uh, Power Virtual Agents with ChatGPT, so you can really create much more better bots than just conversational size stuff which you can uh, define on the creation page. When I say the elevate uh, conversation, the general idea of elevating the conversation is to uh, really have possibility to easily and fast create Power Virtual Agents or chatbots. Uh, again, like general Power Platform, easily you can deploy them across the different channels. Everything is in drag and drop uh, mode, so you are just putting the, uh, the different side of uh, type of conversation, the place where you want to, uh, to put them. You have really great analytics in the, in the back of everything. And what's the best side? You can always edit them 
and with just only one publish button, everything is going to be changed with all edit stuff which you have created in the meantime. So when you put them on some website, like we are going to do today at the end, whenever you made some changes, just one button and everything is available for all users after publishing. So you do not have to make any kind of connections uh, more. And general stuff, improving uh, your bots over uh, general usage of time. So it means that Power Virtual Agent has some AI in the back, and it understands different languages. And with uh, that possibility, it will be become more smarter, and it will, be, um, it will understand more uh, different type of conversation from the moment when you start using it after maybe month, two, or three. And, okay, my presenter is not switching slides. Okay, and <laughs> at the end, uh, you can incorporate your uh, Power Virtual Agents to any business processes you like. So, uh, general definition of how you want to lead your conversation with, uh, with your customers or your employee is, uh, is defined by you, so you can really implement them wherever you find some small possibility that it is really good to uh, give kind of conversation to employees or the customers. It's, it, it is integrated with almost all uh, natural Microsoft products, so with a couple of clicks you can uh, just upload it to Teams or you can enable it in Power, uh, power Pages, and uh, it is connected naturally with uh, uh, Microsoft uh, case management application, uh, so you can really follow when uh, something is elevated uh, to conversation, a real conversation uh, with uh, your agent inside the company, it can be just everything follow in a case management, so everything is pretty naturally connected as it should be with chatbots. And next part, what we have used in our connection is adaptive cards. We are going really to be short in a topic of adaptive cards because generally adaptive cards are, uh, so let's say, a little bit brand new, and it is really easy to uh, integrate them and to publish them in a lot of different places. I will show you how they work and how you can really easily create them and connect it, in our case, to Power Virtual Agent. But why is really good to use uh, adaptive cards? First of all, they are uh, open for usage, so you can really create them with your Microsoft account. You do not have any costs, so just log in, create adaptive card, copy JSON, paste it to the place where you want to use them, and you will have it. And then, of course, later on you have to connect them with different kind of the system where you want to collect that data, but generally, adaptive cards is pretty easy to create and pretty easy to connect. So, they are open, low cost, they are, uh, they are, uh, they are decorative stuff, so why we are using them is today is because they're really nice to see. If We will show you two different approach uh, how you can ask some questions to your clients. So one of the approach is to put adaptive card which, is, which could be nicely designed and to put many different questions in one place. And other side is just to ask your clients question over question over question so that you can collect some number of data. So they're really great to use, and you can really find a lot of different places where you can use them and how you can get some really great value from the adaptive cards. And they really can uh, simply be created, and, and they can express means of uh, any kind of contact, and you can really connect them to everything what you like. And then we have put here some different number of templates, which I will show uh, to you, but you can see uh, different designs and some of different uh, data which you can collect through adaptive cards. So with that, I will go to our first demo. And in our first demo, I will show you how to create Power uh, Virtual Agent and one adaptive card. Okay, first of all, this is the website where you are creating adaptive cards. So from this place, this is adaptive, adaptivecards.io. Uh, and from this place, 
uh, I will start because I will going to use them in inside of uh, virtual agents. So this is the first thing which I, we are going to, to create today, and then we are going to implement them. We are not going to stay for too long here. First of all, I would like to just show you some templates which you already have here. So if you go to create new, there is possibility just to take some of them from templates and just to use them immediately. So there is some application login with already preset the username and password, so password will, uh, will be hidden when you start typing. And you just have to select this and copy JSON, so it can be really pretty easy uh, implemented to, to any other place where you need. Uh, there is uh, flight uh, informations or weather informations, a lot of different stuff which you can use through many different places. But let's not use some of those. Let me just, we have already pre-created this JSON. So generally you can see from here that uh, we have used one of the templates and then we just have to adapt it for this uh, occasion. So it is pretty easy to, to do it. I will copy and then explain it to you. Okay. And from here, you see that we are asking some questions which we are going to ask to our customer in our chatbot. So <coughs> what we want from our customers is from them to give us their ID, then to uh, say which product they want to buy from us and the quantity of that product. If you can see the, inside the, this JSON file, you can see that each of these part is just defined in small JSON part. So first of all, there is what type of the field we want to, this to be, uh, the name and the variable which we are going to define or ID of this field. And this is important because later on we are going to connect via this variable or ID to the BC. And then we are defining if it is required or if we have some error message or some message which we want to have uh, written on, on inside of the field. Generally, we have defined the rest of the fields in the same way. If you want to add something new, you have here on the left side uh, different uh, type of inputs if you want to, pu uh, to put inside the uh, text input or input date, whatever you would like, you just can uh, drag and drop to your, uh, to your adaptive card and it will be automatically added to the JSON part. So you just have to define some small stuff if it is necessary, like it is, if it is a uh, mandatory field uh, or if you want to have some specific name for the uh, variable part, you just have to define those stuff, but general code is going to be automatically added. We are not going to stay here anymore, so now let me jump back to the, uh, to the Power Virtual Agent. So what we have did on the first step, we have went to Power Platform, so from, this, from, uh, from makepowerplatform.com, and we have just selected the chatbot so that you do not have to wait until we type in name and until we wait to general chatbot is being created in the back. So from that place, I will start the creation of the chatbot, and then later on, Nicola will continue with connecting with the business center. So first of all, it is important, I will just close this test stuff to explain you some stuff. Uh, it is important to know that Power Virtual Agent is working generally in a topic perspective. So whenever you want to create some uh, part of the conversation, you, you will create it as a topic. Later on, you can connect many different topics, and general advice in creating of Power Virtual Agent is to create it with, two, with much more topics than to create one really big uh, Power Virtual Agent. It is much easier to support, and you can always redirect from one topic to another. When you start, if you have never uh, used Power Virtual Agent, my advice, or our advice, is going to be to start with this lesson one, two, and three. This is out of the box when, which you are getting when you start the trial. And they are pretty good because you already have some uh, topic uh, created and some, uh, some uh, conversation in the back. So you can start there and you can just uh, make them better or change some stuff so that you, you will have really good introduction how to work with chatbots. But we are not going to do this, this today. We are going to start from the blank and Okay, what we are going to do here, first of all, we are going to change this uh, topic name. So 
I will name it just tail sorter, and we will focus on our first step. First step of each uh, topic is, of course, of course, trigger. Uh, trigger is a place where you are defining uh, on which phrases or sentences this uh, Power Virtual Agent is going to be triggered. So when uh, this side of conversation is going to be uh, started with customers. So what I'm going to type in here is just a couple of them. So I will say items. I will say buy to buy item. I want to buy product, and I will not uh, type more of those. But you can add a um, bigger number of them, and it is advisable, as you can see here, to start learning the boat needs for, from five to ten trigger phases so that he can understand what you really want to achieve through this topic. When you have added your phrases to the trigger, the next stuff is to add a new node. So from the perspective of adding node, you will see that we have here one drop down where you can add uh, some number of different type of the questions or uh, you can show different uh, type of the messages or connect to any other topic. So what we are going to do here, we are going to ask the question uh, to our customers. And later on, I will use uh, the different type of, uh, of these questions to the customer, so you will uh, understand the difference in all of them. So what we want to ask our customer first is, are you our customer? OK. And then I will add two options. So first one is going to be yes. And the second one is going to be no. What we are adding here, so uh, as you said, uh, as you saw in uh, our adaptive card, we are asking from the clients uh, three, uh, three, st uh, three things. First is, first is your customer ID. If you are not our customer in this case, you will not be able to create sales order because we do not have you in Business Central. So we are asking this question to user of this chatbot. If he is our customer, if he is not, we will create a different branch of uh, conversation where we are going to ask him to give us some information so that we can create him as a customer. And if he is a customer, we will lead him to another branch. What we are going to do here, I will just rename this variable. And uh, this is just naming. Later on, uh, you will see when Nicola starts with the uh, connection, you will see that variables are important, but they are not really important in each uh, node which you add. In this place, they are generally not going to be important to the rest of the conversation. But my advice is always because virtual agents and chatbots can become really complex and really big, it is really good to always know which part, specifically when you're using multiple choices, which choice select is for which part of, uh, of your chatbot. So always rename variables, and in some cases, they are going to be really useful. So now, in our yes branch, I will, uh, I will ask a question with adaptive card. So what I'm going to do now, I will jump back to adaptive cards, and I will copy this whole JSON. And again, I will just click on this place in adaptive card, and I will just paste this whole code and click outside of the box. And as you can see, it is already active, and you can, uh, when you publish this chatbot, you can start using it immediately. And as you can see here, all uh, inputs and outputs are created. So uh, all of these three uh, text box are created as inputs, and from them we are receiving some output. So this is already pre-created variables which we are getting from chatbot, and Nicola will use them in uh, uh, connection and creation of sales order. So in this place, I will stop with this branch, and on the other branch, I will ask some questions more so that we can create new customer if it is needed, if somebody who has started the conversation it is not our customer. So what I'm going to do again, I will ask a question, and I will ask user, would you like to become our customer?
And again, question is easy, yes. Yes or no. And let's change variable. Variable new customer. And from here, if you don't want to become new customer, now this is the thing which I have told you. Uh, you can always redirect him to another topic. So what we can do here, we can go to topic management and we will uh, choose transfer conversation. Uh, what this means, if we have connected already uh, our some of the case management uh, software which we can use it, uh, it can immediately uh, co uh, connect to this virtual agent and when somebody comes to this node, it will create the case on your software which you're using. So. I will just write, call a customer. And from this, when case is created, we do not have any other software, but if we have it, when case is created, some, some of the agents will see this message and they will call this customer. And for the end, we will say here, topic management, and we will just go to, to the end and we will select goodbye. So. What I'm selecting here is another topic. This is the stuff which I have so and told you in the beginning. Uh, do not create really gigantic chatbots. Try always to create a bigger number of smaller ones and try to redirect your customer to always to specific conversation which is needed. Because later in the future, support and uh, of this Power Virtual Agent is going to be, mu be much easier than when you create one really gigantic. And we have one more branch here to focus, and this is the yes one, if somebody would like to become our customer. So from the yes, we want to ask them a couple of questions. Again, we are going to ask a question, and first question is going to be uh, not multiple choices in this moment, it's going to be user response. So uh, in question, you can always choose between different type of the questions. Until this moment, we were using always multiple selects, so we have yes or no, or no, or you can put any other definition which is needed for you, but you have possibility to use user entry response. This means that you are allowing your customer to write whatever they like. So just always take care. If it is possible to give them to your customers that availability to write whatever they like, it is great, but sometimes it is really not good to give your customers that possibility. We are going to use it in this moment, and we will just ask them for the company name. Okay, I will be fast and I will change variable. Then I will ask two more questions. And let's ask them a question about company email. And this is going to be uh, email type of uh, question. So this is great because uh, uh, chatbot will understand if you have not put at and then something after that, uh, it, he will not understand that this is not an email. And let me just change this variable, email. And for the end, we are going to just ask them one more stuff, ask a question and company address. And for this, we are again going to let them to use user and response. And let's change this variable. So from here, we have created chatbot, some basic stuff, and I will just save this, this Power Virtual Agent, and I will show you one more stuff, and then we will return really fast to our presentation. Sometimes you have to wait maybe couple of seconds or a couple of maybe minute or two to, to this virtual agent be saved. Okay, it is fast at this moment. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to publish this. So when I click publish, as I said in the beginning, from the moment when you click, it is available. So if you have co connected this virtual agent to some, uh, let's say, power page at the end, from the moment when you have clicked published after some changes, these all changes are becoming available to all users to your website. So I'm going to just publish it and leave it there. And 
let's return to our presentation. So, in our first demo, you have saw how you can create a Power Virtual Agent and how you can easily create adaptive card and how you can connect them. The next stuff which I'm going to talk a little bit more about is Power Automate. If you have never ever had possibility to use it, it is a great tool for uh, automating the most of the stuff which you can automate. So as uh, it said here, take care of what's important, automate the rest. So beside automation, this is generally a great tool for connecting different softwares or different applications uh, from many different places and many different vendors when it's needed. So, for taking care of what's important and automate the rest, so the idea of uh, generally of Power Automate is, uh, is to, do, uh, to do more with less. So uh, you just have to put some effort to create some basic automation and then you can be focusing on the different stuff and this will be working really great and really fast and in 99.9% .9 really uh, is going to be really reliable because it's not failing so, so often. So it is great for automating the repetitive task because if some of the things are um, happening from the, from the time to time or every day or every month, why not automate them if it is always the same stuff? Uh, so it, it is increasing efficiency and of course reducing cost if you can automate some things and some, somebody else do not have to do them manually anymore, it is great for that. And most important side, it is low-code development platform. So really everybody can start with it, really everybody can use it or try it, and everybody can connect different system with using of Power Automate. So when we say turn outdated into automated, we mean to have possibility really to automate quickly and really securely. And of course, in the back of the everything, we have some AI. So with AI, you can really track uh, your efficiency of your Power Automate. So you can boost your efficiency with general tracking. The idea of tracking is if you have some bigger automation and with a lot of branches, you can see where your automation is going to the which side and how, how much time it's needed to pass through, through whole automation. So you can understand where is really complex side and you can maybe make it easier or to make some filtration of the data easier. Nicola will make some of those so, you can, so that you can really make it faster and to give you really great uh, value at the end and to be really efficient and easy to create. And of course, you can use it everywhere, anytime, as you like. So, the most important place of using the Power Automate and generally creating Power Automate, it is on the web. So we are going to create it on the web. Everybody you can, if you have the license, you just can go log in and connect it. You can use it on mobile devices. You can use it on desktop. You can use it in Microsoft Teams. All of these, except desktops, are generally Power Automate, the basic Power Automate. Desktop part is robotic processes. So in Power Automate desktop uh, applications, you are creating only robotic processes. It is not working like the rest of Power Automate. The most important side of Power Automate, before we continue to the other side of our presentation, it is that it has more than 750 connectors, and uh, most of, not most, but let's say almost half of those connectors are not to Microsoft uh, applications and to Microsoft ecosystem. You can connect, uh, for example, Salesforce. You can connect SAP. You can connect uh, uh, Google. You can connect so many different uh, third-party applications to your uh, some Microsoft application or to other application which you're using. It is really great stuff for making automatization and to connecting different systems. And of course, you can always use it inside of one system for creating workflows. So. When something happens on the table, for our example, uh, sales orders, you can then change some other stuff on, uh, let's say, customer table. So, great tool for automating stuff. And from here, we are going to focus why we are using all of these applications together. Yeah. 
Thank you, Marco, for this explanation and to see the basic overview and the high level what is actually there and what are also our options. But we want to take a deep dive action and to see actually how we are going to extract all of the data from the business central itself to see what are our capabilities and how we can benefit actually by connecting all of, all of our stuff. So by connecting and by clicking this, it works, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, why we are going to actually use them together and what is actually the full benefit of uh, combining Business Central itself and the Power Automate is to actually expand, extend our capabilities of our bot. So the bot works basically on the data. So that's the main part of what we are going to actually use it there. And if we extend the capabilities and extend our data through many different systems, like the Business Central itself, and we know that the Business Central has a lot of different data that we can benefit from and to actually show to the customers, this is how we are going to actually extend our capabilities and actually benefit from using both systems like this. And also, when we are going to trigger the actions, we can trigger the actions from many different places there. So what, it, what, what does it mean? So by connecting it with the Power Automate, you saw a lot of options where we are going to actually, where we are able to actually trigger all of our systems. So if we are going to use it in the Automate, if we are going to use it in, our, um, in some of our websites, or if we are going to use it somewhere locally, or it doesn't matter where we are going to action, but it matters that you have ability to trigger those actions, actually to take those actions from, for your business central from many different places now, just simply by extending all of the capabilities there. And of course, there are also ability, and we know that there are still people that use uh, some legacy systems and some uh, on-premise stuff. So maybe this is the way how they are going to put some, some of their data live and on the cloud, basically by simply connecting it with some, some that Marcus said, some of 750 connections that we are able to benefit from uh, Power Automate itself. So if we are able to combine and to trigger all the actions from what we have it on premise and connect it with something that stands for the own cloud, we are now able to connect everything just by simply putting in between the Power Automate itself. And of course, uh, there are some kind of expectations with uh, the customers itself, and we know that they like to be everything as fast as possible, everything to be responsive, everything they like to be for the yesterday. So basically, on that note, probably this is the best way how they can actually leverage all of the data that you have it on your side, on your business central, and based on them, how they can go to expose the data for them easily and reliably just by simply connecting this all of the stuff. So you will be able to see later on in the demo how actually it is responsive and how it's actually going to see, let's say, almost in real time data, what is going to be uh, al almost instantly from the business central itself from that node. And if we are going to switch it up a little bit from, from that node and to see the business central itself and the power virtual agent. So, yeah. Uh, uh, for the first part, we extracted basically at three sections what is actually the full benefit of using the business central itself and the power virtual agent. You saw the, a lot of capability how we can easily create the bot itself and a, a lot of topics there. But by connecting all of the stuff there, you're allowing actually your customers to enter their data directly, simply into your business central. So you're not, able, you're, you're not needed actually to, to manage all of the data there. And I will explain how this is possible later. By exposing the data directly from the business central itself, I know this is a little bit hard topic because there are a lot of sensitive data there in the business central that can be a little bit tricky, but you will see how you're able to manage all of the stuff, what you're going to actually expose to the end, end customer. And by saying all of this, you're actually leveraging everything and taking the next step for the higher communication with the customers. So you're actually taking that next step for, for them to be quickly and reliably and to have the response as fast as possible. So allowing customers to enter their data, yeah, uh, 
by simply allowing, allowing them to enter the data into, into the business central itself. This is the best way how you're able to manage some of your customers directly inside of the business central. Of course, there are a lot of emails, a lot of calls, everything which you're going to manage there. A lot of data gets updated from their side, and you need to manage everything by your side and everything to be up to date basically on your system, and you like to be on that way. But simply, if you're able to expose the data, it's just, just an input part from your business central itself, you're able to give them permissions simply to input the data, what you would like to them to input, and simply have it reliably on your side. So this is the, this is the huge benefit, benefit from, from your side that you don't have to manage everything by your calls or your emails and everything simply just by, just by providing them a simple virtual agent that they can input some of the stuff and simply have all of the data there uh, there from, from, from your side. And of course, speed up the communication. This is the priority for them because they can simply input something into the chat and you, they will see all of the results there. Uh, and like I said, exposing the data from the business central, I know it's a, it's a hot topic, but what is actually a possibility there is to give the permission to the end user only the data that you are allowed to give them. So you don't have to give them the whole database, you don't have to give all everything from the business central, every single secret there, what is there. So you are in choose what you're going to expose it. You have the filters, you have the possibility what you're going to expose. So you're in charge of what you're going to actually allow them to input, allow them to see, Everything there is most of the stuff that you are going to see and the benefit from, from using some kind of this stuff. And you'll be able to see the almost, let's say, almost real-time uh, benefit from using some kind of a trigger from the Business Central itself because it's almost working like it is. You're simply inputting the data and basically uh, you're able to see almost live the data inside of the Business Central itself later on. Yeah. And taking the communication, like we said, to communication to the next level from the customer itself, it's the possibility to take everything basically on the next level and to have that fast experience based on, the, based on just simply inputting something into the chat, seeing all of the results. And you saw the adaptive cards, how they can see uh, beautiful from the perspective of that and what is important to, to see and for you to know that you're in charge and you're able to edit. Marco showed you the JSON, what you, you're able to see there, but you're able to see a lot of different things. You can input a lot of images if you want to see them. You can input uh, a lot of text, a lot of triggers, everything you're able to change there, put it as, li as much as you like, and if all of the information you're in charge of how you're going to input to them. So this is the one way of how you're going to leverage and have the next level communication uh, on that note. And before we move to the uh, uh, demo itself, this is some of the examples that we prepare for you and you're able to see and Mark already started creating um, some of them by connecting and creating the sales order itself. So you're able to create a sales order. This is how it looks like if you finish everything on the chatbot. So we expose it live here on the left hand side. Directly this is the portal itself. So this is the Power Apps portal that we connected everything from our chatbot. And you're able to see all of the, all of the IDs here and everything it is matched to the business central itself. And we are able to see all of the data matched directly inside of our chat. Now basically in, in, the, in the business central itself. And also Marco created a two branches there. And on the right hand side there, you're able to see how you're able to create a new customer. So somebody maybe wants to create a new order, but it is not uh, existing customer in our system. So if we provide to them enough information and if they have enough input there, they will be able to create a new customer and we'll be able to see a new customer directly in our business central. And based on that, we can now create uh, next orders based on new customer and everything what we have in stock from our business central itself. Let's move on to the demo. And so we can show all of the data there. Yeah. So Mark already started everything from the, from the Power Ritual agent. So based on that, it is good to have just addition to that connected up, uh, up uh, Power Automate itself. And based on that, you cre he created this topic, it's called sales order. 
we can now continue having everything there. And if you want to continue based on that, we can basically create a, now a sales order. And how we are able to benefit of using the sales order itself, we can move to this, uh, to this section where it says place in order. So now we are providing to end customer our adaptive card that he wants to input all of our data that is needed. And based on that, when we capture all of the, all of the stuff in our variables that we previously set it up, so this is our next step, we set it in plus, we just simply go to the call in action and simply create a flow. And based, based on that, we are referred directly to the Power Automate itself and we are able to start creating everything what is there. And what is good to know, uh, you, this is the only way how you're able to create a Power Automate directly for the, for the chatbot itself. So you're not able to create from the scratch or something like that because the Power Virtual Agent gives you this, uh, these two options that you have pre-created uh, pre for you. So this is the inputs and outputs. So everything which you're inputting from the previous step in the Power Virtual Agent, now you're going to input it here inside of the Power Automate and exp exposing that data directly back into the Power Ritual Agent after we finish with all of the stuff. So if we're going back, back to the, uh, back to the roots here and have it everything there, so let's say we're going to place in order, we have three inputs here. We saw it previously, company number, product number, and quantity. What we want to do it there when we back it here, we have want to create a three inputs. So company number, we want to create a second one, product number, sorry, and the last one is quantity. And that will be, do, do we want to create a number because it's always constantly number, so we cannot be some letter two or something like that. It needs to be a number, so we are limiting the end user what he able to able to actually input it there. So for what we wanted to achieve with the Power Automate itself, when we want to connect it, we now want to connection with the Business Central itself, and this is where we're going to actually create the sales order itself. And for the creating the sales order, we have to have two things. That's the sales order header and that's the sales order line. So by knowing those th two things that we need to create, now we want to create the next step in between. And when we search it up here, business central, yeah, you're able to see here the connection for the business central itself and all of the options are now exposed and what we are able to, to create here. For, for us, to first to create a sales order, there is a first option here for us to create a record. So simply click on it. And when they make a connection, when everything signs in with our account, we, if you have permissions for creating this, we are now left with every single information what is there. And we are able to choose in the first instance environment. So this is for us a production. We have a company. We are staying with Kronos. The API, this is the important part of what you're going to ex expose here and what you're going to see. So it's beneficial to use uh, version 2.0. This is a must have what you're going to, to use it here. And the table and the table name, it is important for you to know to do, which we're, what you're going to do. And now this is the part where you're going to choose a sales order. So here, you're able to see here the sales orders. And when you're going to choose it, when it makes connection, every single field that you have it there in the business central itself, now it's exposed here, and you're able to leverage everything based on that. So what you have here is simply by providing everything, creating a record for the sales order, what we need is just a simple customer ID. So based on that, we can choose the customer ID as extracted directly from our, our Power Virtual Agent. So we have in the previous step <coughs> our company number. So sorry, a customer number, right? Yeah. Yeah, OK. So. When we have it there, created everything, we now have a connection and we are now able to create everything there what is in, the, in our sales order. What, what you want and what you can collect as much as data as possible from the Power Virtual Agent, you're able to. So whatever you have it there, just simply have it as an input, simply put it into the sales order and you'll be able to create it. 
We are now going to have a, a simple, and we are be, uh, now able to create a simple one. But later on, you will be see how complex it gets and how complex it can get for you to create a sales order and everything what is there. So first things first, we created a sales order. And based on that, we can create a new thing. And that's a sales, uh, sales order line. But first, before that, we need to create to find actual record. And for that, we need to also call a bin central. OK. And before that, we need, need to not create, but to find. So we are going to search for find. And we have a find record. When we are finding record, there are different things. But it's important to know that it's always the environment. What you're going to choose, your environment, your company, everything is standard. Of course, API category is still 2.0. Everything is the same. But now you're going to just choose what you, what you actually need there. And for that, we are actually going to find for the sales orders, you have to find the item that you're going to, to input there into, into, uh, into, your, uh, into your sales order line. So we are searching for the item. And we are seeing here the items table. <laughs> and based on that, we are now able to, to search for it. But this is the limitation. This is, this is the part where you're limiting what you're going to, to search for. So here. This is the actual part what you're going to, 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 to there to expose it. So here, what you're going to expose is to filter it out. Well, this is the filter query part, what you're going to do it. And you're, you already have your number. You ever have everything there. You have your item ID. Have it from, from your chatbot. Now let's use it and simply say it, OK? You know that we have our number in the business central. So let's filter it out with number. So let's say number equal. And let's use that item that we previously created there. So this is the product, yeah, product number. So everything there. And this is a little bit of the syntax there. We need to put it into this, I guess. OK, have it everything there. And this is now how it's going to be working. So we created a record for the sales order. We now find a record for the item. Everything, everything is fine there. Everything is nice for us. So we are now able to create the, the next step, and that's a sales order line. So again, business central. Okay. And again, we are able to create a record. Same step. Version 2.0. And now we are focusing on not the sales order, but the sales order lines. And again, this is the, all of the stuff, everything what is exposed there directly from the sales orders line. So every single field that matches to the, that table, now it will be exposed to them. So everything what is there, everything will, uh, everything will be shown. So simply by, by doing that, we're now able to switch it up and to have everything populated there. So based on that, what you're going to, what you're going to match it up now is to have it your ID. So you have it in your previous step that you find a record from your items itself. So based on that, we can switch it up. Let's say here, this, there is, here, here is an item ID. So in the previous step, when we find it, our records, there is an ID that we can match it up. So what it's doing currently, it is applying to each and putting into that step. And if we have a multiple items that is going to need it to go through to every single ID, it is going to be populated directly there. So we are not limiting now to the only one item in, in the time. So if we have multiple items, it will go through all of the items, all of their IDs, and it will be able to populate everything in the sales order lines. Of course, based on that, we also extracted the quantity part for, from the user itself. So we were able to match it here. This is our field. So we can, if we can, yeah, it's quantity, power vessel agent, everything is fine. And now we are all connected and everything part, if we, if we just save it up, we'll be able to connect everything to the business central itself, and that's fine. But what we are missing currently is the part what we are going to expose actually to the end customer. We created everything in the background. That's all fine. But we need to give them some information that we actually did all of the hard part. And now everything we need to expose what we did in the background. So by, by doing this, 
what is going to be actually beneficial for us is to first rename all of the stuff like Marco renamed all of his variables. What we can do here if we want to create a record, not, not to say v3.2, let's say it, it can be, okay, we can leave it in, let's say, sales orders line, yeah. And for the first stuff, create record, we know it's a sales order, so we can put a dash and say sales order. But for us to expose all of the information there, we need to put into additional variables for us. So everything that is working with bot is basically working with the variables. So now we also need to create some kind of variables for them to understand what we are doing in the background. So let's say in the top, all, always variables are named in the top and everything is going to be created there. So there is an option if we go in and put it there. So a plus sign, add an action, and if we just simply type in a var, we are able to see the variables, and there are a lot of options for the variables, what we are able to, to do with them, but we, what, what we, in the first instance, what we want to do is just to simply create them or to initialize them in the first instance, just by simply putting uh, what we have there, and that is, in the first instance, in the, in, in, for, for that, we want to extract some, some kind of order number, so this is the, this is the first, first thing that we want to have, so order number. We want to put it into the type of the string. You just simply drop down. And we can also rename it there as the initial variable order number. And we are prepared with that one. So if we want to extract more data, for example, variable, so everything there. If you don't want to go to into the variable here, you can simply go here, initialize variable, and you'll be directed to that step immediately. So when we have order number, maybe we want to expose what we all also have it there, and this is the item name. Yeah. Also a string. Yeah. And if we want to, for example, expose one more thing. So initialize variable, and let's name it. And let's say it's a item price. So it's good to know the end customer what he's going to pay at the end. Everything, everything is fine there, yeah? And let's, let's simply rename it, what we said here. Simply copy to name. Item price. Yeah, everything is now set it up. And what we are going to do actually at the end, now to populate all of these variables with the useful information that we found in our previous step from the Bitly Central. So what we are going to do after we finished everything from the Bitly Central, go again to the variables, but now we are not going to initialize them, we are going to populate them. So this is the step we are going to set it up and setting up with the variable. So first things first, what we're going to populate them is to have everything there with the information. So everything there, what we have is now our order number. Let's say it, it first instance. Again, what we have there is everything from that information. Yeah. So on that note, order number, we can put it into the no. So we have, when we find our records, everything what we have in, inside, of the, inside of our thing, we have our numbers, so we can populate it there, and we can also have it there, we name it, order number. Again, set a variable for the second one. We have item, price, item name. So we can display from our, from our business central, we have display name. So again, <coughs> we have everything there. And the last part, we have our variable to populate. And everything there is set it up for us. And just the last one for the price. And this is where we want to find our amount. And we have a lot of offerings from, from the business central itself. So we, with, without, uh, without uh, tax, 
with ex taxing everything what is included there, you're able to you're able to do it. So we are going to amount including tax for the full full price, everything for the for the end customer, and everything is now populated there. What is just the last step for us to have it everything populated into our output, and to have it everything for our output. What we, what we have tested and what we, it's the, be, the best thing to do is to actually compose everything into, into one stuff. So everything to be united, to so everything have as a, as a one answer to the, to the customers so they can understand what they have actually done, uh, done in, the, uh, in the automation part. And for doing that, we just simply need uh, a few steps just, just to create another variable. Let's call it a variable. Initialize. Let's call it a final variable. This is a simple string. When we are going to populate this variable, it's outside everything. Okay. So setting our variable, populating this final variable, and this is where you're going to choose and what you're going to expose to the end customer. So you can, you can say to them, Your order is finished. Order number is, and put your order number. So this is where you're going to expose the variable that we, that we previously populated. So this is the order number. Again, we have what we exposed our name. So everything there, so your product. Yes. And we can expose our name, item name. And again, we have it there. We last stuff is the price. So price and simply put it there. Price. So you can see this is just a simple input of the text. You can you can have it more nicely, you can be creative with the text, everything what you want there, but everything is free for you to choose what you're going to actually expose there. If you want to more variables, more data input, just simply create more variables, and you'll be able to populate everything there. And the final part to this to actually work at the end, you just simply need to compose it, everything into the one part, so simply choose a compose. Yeah, there is a compose. It's just, it's just a simple thing to output what you have everything for the, for the final variable that we populated there. So this is the final variable here, just a simple output. And here, this is what you're going to see actually at the end in the output from for our Power Virtual Agent itself. So this is the text variable. And we are going to just simply all output our final message. So final message and simply just a composed part, what we have combined everything there, we are able to see it here. And what you're also able to see, here is our, what is our going to be our named, our power virtual agent, so this is good to have it as a, for example, sales order. Save it up, and that's it. You're, you're now created in a few steps. What you're going to do is to create a few steps in the background for your business central itself and what you can create and how to connect it. And when, when it, once, once it's saved, now we are able to connect it into, we're back into our uh, Power, Power Virtual Agent. And we'll like, like we said in the previous step, add a node, call in action, and now we don't need to create a flow. We can just simply say, hey, now there is a new Power Automate. Okay, let's use this one. And, and now everything is connected. And what we have created in the, in the, in the previous step or for our inputs of our three inputs, we can now connect it for, with everything data that we have in our previous step with our adaptive card. So company number, for us, that's a company number in the first instance. Expose it here, I want to click. Okay, yeah, there is a var company number. Okay, let's match it with that. We have our product number. So, okay, we have our RAR product number. And there is also a uh, quantity part. So let's match that. We have our RAR quantity, and we have everything now matched for that. So everything now, it, what we have in previous 
previous part is now connected to the Power, Power Automate. Now it will be able to do all of these things in between for the Business Central itself. And this is the part what we are going to output from the Power, Power Automate, is to call everything there, is to just simply send a message, okay, this is the final message that we are going to output from uh, the Power Automate itself. Just simply go insert a variable, and that is the final message directly are now here from our Power Automate. And everything is there. You're now able to see all the things there, everything to do in the background automatically in the Business Central itself, and everything to show to the end uh, for, the, for the end customer. And now this is some kind of a perfect world when the customer knows everything, every single ID, every single quantity, everything is perfect, everything is magical, everything works like that. But of course, it's not magical, it's not the perfect world. So uh, in that instance, we created something that is more complicated, something that can be a little bit more challenging and actually for the end user, more intuitive actually for the end. So we would like to show you that example how it actually works and how, what is actually the capabilities there. So a lot of things, this is everything for the sales order, everything, everything is the same, but the process itself is a little bit more complex. So if we switch it up, you know, if we go a little bit more wider, if we have it there, you can see a lot of more steps are there and a lot of more things are actually inputted in between. And so what is actually there and what we complicated with is to actually not to know everything what customer there is in every single ID. So what we ask for the customer is to simply, hey, can you give me the name of the product? Hey, can you give me just that Athens desk, for example? Just, just simply input there. What's your name? What's your name? Don't give me your ID. Just simply give me that you're an Ashley or a Trey or whatever. You have it there. And we are going to recognize everything in the background, everything again, uh, using by using everything with the Power Automate. Now we are able to, to combine their name, their naming of the products, everything in the background, and to do a lot of stuff again matching. If we can, cannot find all of the products there, we can now say, okay, I cannot find this Athens, for example. I can now match it and say, okay, I cannot find the exact Athens that you're looking for. Can you please be more specific with it? Now we have a lot of more capabilities asking duplicate questions, asking a lot of things from the, from the end user to actually input it there into normal language, not to use some kind of IDs and everything. So this is why it can get a little bit more complex at the end. So it requires a little bit more step to create. But you can also do what, what Marco said in the first instance to create a multiple topics, for example, if you want to differentiate in, in between that. Or you can input it everything in one, but it can get a little bit messy if you have a lot of more things there uh, at the end to, to, to show it up and to maintain after you finish with this. So let's show you how this, for example, works. We stop it here in the place order, everything now we have not the IDs, we have the company name, the product, this is the only the name which you're going to need, and the quantity itself. So the action here that we are calling, it's a little bit more complex, and we have it in the background here, and it takes, so let's go to my flows, everything what we have there, and to create the sales order. And when we have it there, there are a lot of more variables, a lot of more things, a lot of more steps, steps actually included into to, to getting that final result to understand the better language from the, our, our customers. So we have a, like a 10 variables now that we need to initialize actually to at the end to display to the end customer. But the, the possibilities are basically enders. What, what you're going to just simply want for, for them is much as more data what you, what you have at the, at the end and you're going to just simply have a more and more things just done in the background in the automation itself. So by simply finding all of the records and finding everything, you simply need to find match now the words, not the IDs and everything to see all of the duplicates if you have everything in the background. Everything can be maintained and everything can be done inside of, the, inside of our Power Automate itself. So it can be a lot of beneficial stuff there. So, just on that note, you have a, a lot of possibilities there to, to continue working on the, on the chatbot itself. If you want to have, if you, for example, have your final, uh, your final message there and you say, okay, this is, this is okay part, 
everything is done deal, everything is meshed. Now, would you like to, to proceed with the order? Now we can create even more power automates. For example, if you, if you want to ship an invoice, for example, at the end, you're able to, to do it, but you now have to implement some kind of a payment process in between and everything, what you're going to do it, but possibilities are there. You're able to, to do it, but you just simply need to be more creative with all of the, with all of the options there. And I want to switch it up to the Marco for, for yep. now, so if he can show you how this actually looks like live on, the, uh, live on our uh, portal itself, yeah? Okay, thank you, Nicola. So, first of all, I will uh, show you, before we switch to a portal, uh, some uh, stuff which we have in uh, Power Virtual Agent. And this is probably the, one of the best things which you are going to see on the back of the Power Virtual Agent. It is analytics. So we have been created after a few days ago this uh, uh, virtual agent and Nicole and me have been using it. And we gave him a lot of different notes. But you can really get a lot of information so uh, where is your uh, good side of uh, your virtual agent, uh, where the most customers stop, uh, which is the note which are they getting, get, giving you at the end. Really, so many stuff you can, you can get from analytics. And it is always the best part to go at the end and see uh, the general uh, satisfaction and uh, how sessions went by. So you have so many stuff which you can see there. So if you click on customer satisfaction, I will stop there because it will take some time. Before that, while it's loading customer satisfaction, I will show you how our virtual agent works. And then I will just show you one extra stuff, how you can really embed it into Power Page. So what you see here, this is Power Page, or uh, Power Portal, as it was called a couple of days ago, or depends where you click. So you can see <laughs> some strange stuff. But what we have created uh, here, if we go to Page Store, you will see all our items uh, from Business Central, and some more of them. Uh, this is basic uh, data synchronization in between uh, Dynamics 365 sales and Business Central. So what you see here, it's out of the box. Inventory is synchronized. So we have uh, 979 at this desk on a hand. And you will see at the end how synchronization works. This is a little bit extra if you have created the data sync with uh, sales. You will now see how, how fast synchronized the data. You can click here on a chatbot, and let's start conversation with it. I want to buy. And I will pass through a couple of different sites. First of all, I will say that I'm not existing customer, and I want to, to become a customer. And my company name is, I will just say MS. And my, name, my email is MS at ms.com. We have already Microsoft because we have tested, so, so let's say Belgrade. And now, what we have here is our customer ID. So if we need this information to show to our customer, we'll be exposed to you to just understand that you have possibility to expose different data. But what we have here, we have successfully created one record inside of BC. And let me jump fastly to BC and to see customers. Let's say if analytics is available. Yes. As you can see, our, uh, our uh, average note of our chatbot is 4.2. So you're getting, I'm jumping back, but this statistic is really uh, takes some time to load. You can really get uh, valuable stuff from here. But let's back to items and customers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> let's go to our customers. And you can see that we have uh, our customer which we have created in this with the number C0030 and uh, with email which we have gave to him. So, it's working pretty good. Now, let's ask our chatbot something again. I want to buy. And we will say, yes, we are existing customer. And now, we have our adaptive card. 
what we will do here, I will take some company, and it's going to be a datum. And now I will write some product. And as I will say that I want to buy five of them. Why I'm writing here with capital letters? Because this is case sensitive inside of Business Central. So if I wrote with any kind of letters, it will not understand. You have to change setup. That uh, name is not case sensitive. And in that perspective, it can work whatever you like. I will just submit. And I did this on purpose now. Because when I have submitted, uh, as you know, we have two products, which is called Athens. This is the thing which Nicola has explained that we have, you have possibility to make it more complex. We explained how you can create it pretty easy, but the logic is the same, but you can expand that logic. We were working in that perspective that we want to check if there is some other, uh, some other product with this, mm, this part of the name is the same. So we know that we have Athens. So uh, we wrote the message that there is multiple items with the same uh, with the same uh, part of the name, please give me a uh, little bit more of the name. And it will be working the same stuff for the customers. So if there is a customer which is logging in and just writes Microsoft, and there is, I don't know, Microsoft Development Center, Microsoft Software, uh, and the rest of the Microsoft, he will say there is multiple Microsofts, please give something else. And I will just write here, Atkins D. And let me take 50 of them. And let's submit this order. OK. We have an error. Let me try once more. I have to pull the <laughs> Somebody's having fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that can always happen. Desk. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's working. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see here, we have exposed uh, some, of the, some of the data. So we have a sales order number. Uh, we exposed that uh, you have bought Atkins Desk, and we gave you the ID because we already have it on our portal, the same data. And how much number of, uh, how big quantity you have bought, and how much you have to pay. And now we have implemented one extra step, which is not so common stuff, but uh, let's say that Let's imagine that here we have some payment method that somebody wants to pay immediately. So this only yes and no will be our payment method, but you can create some adaptive card and maybe connect to some payment methods. It is possible, but you, we just have to have something over with, where we can pay. But if, let's imagine that we have created that. And let's say yes. What we are going to do now, we have one extra Power Automate, which is going to post this uh, this sales order, and he will sell the number of uh, we sold only once, but he will uh, change the inventory and he will create invoice and post that invoice and the rest of the stuff. And of course, the chatbot is asking this, do this answer our question and let's note him. And let's say that he cannot help with anything else. Now, if we go, we, we see here that it is number 979. Let's go to the items. And let's refresh items. You will see that number is, has been reduced. Just to, ro to load. OK, now it's 978. And if you go to our portal, let's see how integration or data synchronization between sales and it's working. So as you can see, here it is working pretty fast. So if you have possibility to, uh, to check uh, data synchronization between Business Central and sales, it is really great. All data is just mostly on a couple of clicks. You do not have to do anything beside this basic setup to have something like this inside the CRM or sales application. What we have wanted to show you one more stuff is that if you have uh, some uh, power page like this one, which we have, just to explain you how easy it is to connect it with your virtual agent. So Nicola has connected here, and he has exposed all the stuff. 
uh, who connected with our uh, with our power automate which we ha he has created. I will save it and publish it. Do it really fast. Okay, we have time. And let's publish it. And when it's published, I will just go to our uh, power page or power portal, which we have created, and let's go. It is exactly the same, except this one don't have chatbot exposed. I will just go to another page where we have our connection. And all what you have to do is to go to the components, select chatbot, and you have to choose which one, because maybe you have a bigger number of them. You just have to select that one which you want to expose, and you have possibility to check in if you want to uh, this chatbot be exposed to all pages or the only specific one. So if we say specific, we can manage it on which specific one, uh, select or unselect, do whatever is needed. I will click OK. OK. And OK, button is not working. <laughs> OK, I will refresh this page and do this step again. This is trial environment, and this stuff happens from time to time. OK. There it is. Let's go to store. What's happening? <laughs> He's not allowing me to click where I want. Okay, let's. I hope that it will work now. If it is not, the editor is has some bug, obviously. Okay, let's add. Oh, it is there. It's working. Let's just sync, and let, we will go to this website and check it once more. Okay, when it's synchronized, just to load the page. Let's go to browse website. And in just a couple of clicks, our virtual agent is exposed. OK. Here it is. So if we ask again the same question, order, I believe that we have wrote something. Let's say items, are you? our customer, and if we continue, it will just continue to the steps of the uh, sales order which we have created here today. And one more side of uh, publishing is if you go to channels, you can see here that we have possibility to expose our virtual agents to really a lot of different places. It is not, let's say, huge, huge number, but it is nice number, I will zoom out, so you see that we have a possibility to expose it to Skype, Facebook, Telegram, and some of different. But what is really important, we can always go to custom website, and what we have here is iframe code. So if we have some custom place where we want to expose our chatbot, all we have to do is to copy this and to go to back of our website to paste it and this power virtual agent is going to be exposed and you will have possibility to use it on the different places. So I know that list is fine, it's not great, maybe it can be bigger, but the stuff is pretty easy to be shared on a different place. And for the Teams, it's probably the easiest. You just have to click and to choose Teams channel or uh, to install it as a different app and it is working on Microsoft Teams natively. So. From here, I will just jump back really fast to our presentation. And this is on. And 
we have showed you our demos, and on, at the end, we want to, let's say, conclude this, uh, this whole topic which we have passed today. And we have did it with a table. As you can see here, we have our three main products which we have used uh, today. We have not uh, put adaptive cards because this is, in our perspective for today's session, it was just a card where we are collecting data, but these were three main applications which we were used. So, Power Virtual Agent is the app where we wanted to, uh, to have everything done and started. Power Automate to connect the stuff, and the Business Central, which data we wanted to use today. And we have parts with data sharing, uh, customer-oriented solution, easy to use, and the stuff how it's integrated with external systems. So, if we check in this perspective, most of this stuff in the table is, uh, let's say, oriented from the end customer perspective. So for data sharing, uh, generally, Power Virtual Agent is well, not so, not so great, as you saw. It has possibility just to connect to a couple of different places. It has possibility to have iframe, but it is not so great for data sharing. But Power Automate and Business Central is really great for data sharing. You can uh, specifically Power Automate, which is generally uh, the idea of whole Power Automate is to be connected and shared with many different applications or platform. And Business Central has really good possibility to share data. As customer-oriented solution, we obviously can say that only Power Virtual Agent, it is really customer-oriented. So it is oriented to your employees or your customers, but uh, it's only for them. They are typing in, they are connecting, they are talking, and they are getting some results. But Power Automate and BC are not there for end customers. They are not for end users who should talk with a Power Virtual Agent. They are for us who are creating these connections and automations, or we are working from day to day with BC. Easy to use, chatbot, as you have saw, it's pretty easy. There is not so big complexity. Uh, everything is, let's say, in a way of drag and drop editor, and it is pretty easy to add and to remove some stuff or to connect it to some e external site. And for Power Automate and Business Central, first of all, we said we put this yellow mark that we will say so-so. Uh, Business Central is probably one of the easiest to use ERP softwares in the world or one of the easiest uh, business applications in the world, but let's be obvious, people who are not from this world, business applications are not easy. They are really complex. When you show them Business Central or all Dynamics 365 sales or anything of these, they will be, wow, what, what the hell is this? But generally, if you are using them, they are easy. If you are not, it's something which you will not uh, find yourself pretty suitable in. And Power Automate, for on the other side, it can be really easy. Uh, when Nicola started creating, you have saw that he, he just have uh, added the create uh, sales order header, create sales order line. He, he was just adding steps which he has to fulfill, and he has some data which are coming in, and it was pretty easy. If you're working from day to day with Power Automate, most of the tasks which you're going to automate are generally going to be easy. Maybe sending some emails, connecting different tables or connecting different softwares or uh, sending some notification to maybe some manager or approval processes. Really, the biggest number of Power Automate usage is pretty easy, but it can get complex. As you have saw, the end Power Automate, which we, ha we have created, it is complex, but it can be more complex than that. Uh, filtration of the data, getting many, too many different uh, filters to, to just go to one specific record, and there is really, again, Power Automate, in our perspective, is so-so because you can make some really fast, easy stuff, and on the other side, you can get so complex. And integration, Power, uh, Power Virtual Agent, you saw, it has possibility to be integrated, but it is not great. It has iframe and everything, but it is not so great. On the other side, uh, Power, Power, Agent, uh, Power uh, Automate and Business Central are really great with integrating with external systems. As you saw, we just show you one integration uh, here on our web page, on our uh, Power page, we have integration with Dynamic Sales and it, working, it works in a couple of seconds, it's just change inventory. So, the idea is that all of these applications, some have some things which are they're lacking in, or some things which where they're great, or somewhere they are so-so. But 
If we connect all of them together, like we did it here today, we have possibility to share data, we have possibility to be only customer-oriented uh, solution. It is really easy to use because it cannot be easier than general talking with or typing with, uh, with a machine at the end. It is natural. And integration is great because really you can integrate to whatever you like or to whatever table you need. So if you use it all together, it is easy and you can achieve a lot from it. From here, we will move to Q&A session because we are near the end. And if you have any question, please ask. We are OK. Let's throw you a cube. Yeah. <laughs> we saw here a first question, yeah? Yeah, let's have it a cube. Um, how does the uh, Power Automate work in regards to many, um, many parallel requests? Because at the, uh, the end, we have the possible bottleneck of BC. When I think of, for example, it's number series. If we have a million customers who try to create a new customer, we have that limited. Um, if I have many people who work on, for instance, this chatbot, are they handled in sequence, or do we have parallel processing there in the background? Yeah, you can, uh, you can have a parallel, you can have a sequence, but what is important here to have it is a separate thing. So every single order that you, for example, start here, it will trigger another Power Automate. So in, in, in the beginning, it will not overlap one with each other. So if one customer have a sales order, it would not overlap their IDs and everything will be in the separate, let's say, action in that moment. So not, not going to be overlapped. And what is actually a possibility there, if, if there is, a, for example, an approval process, for example, that process, that action can stay and stays for that approval process itself. It's not going to overlap with something that's are. So it's in that part, it's regulated, yeah. Okay. And also, I have personally tested it can handle more than a couple of hundred requests in the same moment. Yeah. So okay. it is really capable. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Please. And to be here present there, for the first there was question. A hand here. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Welcome. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Which, which license is uh, required uh, for, for, for this setup? Uh, for for this one, yeah, you can use. I mean, for the business central to connect to it, it's connecting its needs from the power up side. It needs a premium license, so you need to have a license for that. That's a, that's the first thing. If you have this, first. you have power platform. Yeah, mm -hmm. on that yeah. note, you have, need to have a premium licenses. Mm -hmm. And for the, for the power automate, for the sorry, for the power virtual agent, you need to have a separate license for yeah. that. That that means that's a separate license for it. That's a separate regulations, everything for that. But it has included, I think it's 2000. Uh, 2000, uh, 2000 conversation, let me. Yeah, yeah I think open. it's a 200, uh, $200 It's 2000 for sessions for $200. Yeah. And uh, each thousand extra session is $100. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, there is a question here. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, I have a question regarding if you could set up the chatbot to work inside the BC. So if you have a user that is typing something in and receiving an error or something, that you actually could assist them with the Power Virtual Agent to uh, get through this error message and get the data set up in the correct way because they, they trigger some event that is, uh, that's going to be handled by the, the Power Virtual Agent. Yeah, that, yeah error handling, there, uh, there is uh, error handling setup in the Power Automate. So if you want to connect it in the, in, the, in the background, and you need to set up error handling steps inside of the Power Automate itself. So there are some steps we didn't show it today, but uh, for, for that note, if you have some kind of a issues or some kind of an error in that note, it can, it depends how you're going to set it up. What's, what's the end problem for it? But if you have it, uh, for example, some kind of a big issue, you can display it to the customer in, in, in that note, or you can show it to some kind of administrator or something like that. But uh, to solve by itself, it depends how you're set up in, in the Power Automate itself. Yeah, but this was more regarding that you have a user that's inside the BC client, okay. and then you would actually uh, maybe take an action to start up the uh, chatbot because it has this topic 
where they don't know, oh, how is it that I'm gonna create a sales order within the BC client and actually help them through a Power Virtual Agent to get through it step by step so you have this interaction with the chatbot? Yeah, generally it is yeah. possible. You just have to feed it with uh, a lot of information, but uh, generally it is possible. So would you do it by creating a JavaScript and then uh, opening no. the mm. chatbot like that? or? No, it depends on how much data actually you provided in the end, because the chatbot itself, it works on the amount of data that you provided at the end. So if you provide it with enough data from the Business Central, it will know how to create a sales order. It will guide you through all of the steps, but it's not going to be some kind of a custom JavaScript in the background or something like that. It's going to be actually taken from the, all of the information that you're going to input it. For example, if you have some kind of a document, for example, how it is going to be created as a sales order, and you have read for all of the information from there, input it into the chatbot itself, and it will be able to provide this, that kind of information, how to create, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so yeah. it could be within the BC client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And on top Third one, and the t-shirt, yeah. <laughs> we don't have um, t-shirts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These were only for first three questions. Um, maybe I can answer the question which was just uh, told. Um, I have actually built something like that. You have a um, control add-in of size one pixel times one pixel. You can uh, set a z-index, which is pretty high, and uh, style, um, give the control add-in uh, some HTML contents, which will, um, because of the higher z-index, will be shown as an overlay. And you can you can bind that control add-in to uh, some kind of um, to an element pretty high in the hierarchy, and from there you can uh, show the chatbot in Business Central. Uh, you can set up triggers, and um, for the purpose of the error handling, um, we have mapped um, in in Dataverse. We have a mapping between, um, yeah, yeah, just a mapping, where you can um, then return the value of the key value pair for the error codes to the user with the solution. Yeah, with Dataverse is just a little bit, but yeah, it can, it can, it can work, because Dataverse is 100% native with everything power. Busy Center is a little bit different, but again, it can work in a perspective as as explained, yeah. On the top, there are also qu some questions. Okay, we'll go up and down. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it possible to add uh, a field in an adaptive card that has a lookup or some kind of field validation? For example, we selected a product, but first we have to um, enter the product and then it says the product is not valid or the pro product is valid. Can we do it in the adaptive card itself? Yeah, if we feed adaptive cards uh, generally with all products, we can, we can put it uh, all together and uh, with this JSON file, we can just put um, a drop down. We can put many different things there and filter. Yeah, yeah. Just, just an add on there for you to know you're not able to read the data directly, for, for example, from the database itself. Yeah. There is a simple setup for the, for the adaptive cards. As you saw it on the editor itself, there are simple JSON files as itself, but on the right-hand side, there are data sources. So you need to define data sources, what you're going to actually feed it with, with all of the, for example, for the products and everything. And based on that information, then you need to also provide this data source directly inside of the chatbot, and this is how it's everything going to be connected. So this is the, a little bit of limitation and let's say extra work because you, you're not able to read it directly from the database itself. You need to define that data source for your, your yeah. yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. A uh, little bit down, I saw here the question, yeah. Here, yeah. Uh, please let me know uh, what is the uh, good point of using adaptive card? Uh, in other words, uh, 
is it possible to realize your scenario without adaptive card to this, to this node? Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, the, the adaptive card, what we showed here today, it's just for the visuals for the end user to see some kind of a, let's say, fancy inter interface that can answer some kind of a multiple, multiple questions there. But if you just simply want to create uh, one simple question, that's, that's it. You saw it on the other way yeah. on the customer. It's a simple question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, and that's it. Just by using a simple uh, adaptive card, you can combine a multiple things into one place, and based on that, by the variables, you can then expose everything what the actual uh, end user provided there, yeah? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so there is also here. Is there, a, is there a way to transfer the complete solution to a different uh, environment easily? Yeah, yeah, you can always save it as in one solution, export it, import it to a different place, and it works. The whole okay, there's some connection in specifically in Power Automate. If it is not the same naming and the rest of the stuff, you will have to adjust it. But uh, generally, if you're working with out-of-the-box stuff like we did here, it will work without any issue. Yeah, the, there are possibilities to put everything into solutions. The whole ALM process works as the same for everything in the Dataverse. So whatever you put into the solution, all of the connections, and you can also enable the global variables, for example, if you want to input it there and pass it along with all the solutions there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Welcome. Any okay. other questions? Okay, we will be in front and there, so you can uh, meet us. Also, Our emails, emails are, there. are there, so if you so want to contact if, us, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> at the end, thank you very much. Yep.